Hello. In this video, I kind of want to look at the idea of average rate of change and the average value of a function. And I think the best way to kind of get an understanding of the difference between those is to look at it in light of your position function, velocity function, and acceleration function. How does the average value versus average rate of change between those functions um, look like? So we do know that we have the position function and the derivative of that is the velocity function, derivative of that is the acceleration function. Or going the other way, if you have the acceleration function, the, the integral of that is the velocity and the integral of that is the position function. Okay, so I'm gonna expand on this idea a little more later in the video of difference between average rate of change and average value. Um, but I want to start by answering this question. Uh, and it says, suppose the speed of a rolling ball is modeled by the velocity function, v of t is equal to negative 3t squared plus 4t plus 5 on the interval 0 to 2, where t is time in seconds. Find the average velocity of the ball from t equals 0 to t equals 2 seconds. Average velocity. Okay, what is that asking us to do? This is an average value question, and we know that an average value, that's that integral thing. That's the 1 over b minus a times the integral of your function, okay, from a to b. Now, why is it that? Why is it average value? When I talk about the value of a function, what is that? That's the output, the y value. So I'm looking for the average value. Um, does that match up with this wording of velocity or should it be average uh, acceleration average uh, displacement well what's my average value of the velocity function what is the output of a velocity function the output of a velocity function is the velocity therefore to find the average value of this function would be to find the average velocity you see how the wording of this question is asking for average velocity and that word velocity matches up with the value of the function I'm given, v of t. So it's an average value question. So then as soon as you know that, you can go right to your formula here. The 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of your function. And at this point, it's just going to be a pretty simple integral, and we will be able to figure it out. So I have 1 half times the integral of negative t cubed plus, let's see, 4t squared divided by 2, so 2t squared plus 5t. And we're going from 0 to 2. Okay, so I'll keep the 1 half out front. Um, and first we have negative 8 plus 2 squared is 4 plus 8 plus 10. And then minus, well, it's all at zero, so nothing. Good. So I have one half times the eights cancel. One half times ten equals five. What are we finding? Velocity for five uh, meters per second. Looks like we aren't given um, it, whether it's meters or feet. Okay, so the average velocity of this function is five meters per second. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about when do I find average value versus average rate of change? What's the difference between the math, the calculus of those two? When I find average rate of change, what you use is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. It's kind of the slope of the secant line. That's your rate of change. Average value that's the integral stuff. That's 1 over b minus a, the integral from a to b of f of x. Okay, so that's average value, average rate of change, the basic math of it. Now, when to use what I think is best uh, explained or the best way to get a basic understanding of it is to go to our position versus velocity versus acceleration function. If I'm asked to find the average velocity of something, there's actually a couple of ways to do it. And it all depends on what you're given. If I'm given the velocity function as I was before, 
I'm going to say the average velocity is 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of my velocity function. Okay, because average velocity, I'm finding the average output of my function. But what if I'm given the position function? Okay, so I'm given s of t. Well, that's okay. Because then I can just do s of b minus s of a all over b minus a. Both of those right there are going to give me the average velocity. Because that in green, that s of b minus s of a, well, that's the slope of your secant line on the distance function, okay? So that's like the, the slope of your position function. And we know slope is rate of change. What's the rate of change of position? Oh, it's velocity. It's going to give your average velocity. Okay, and now what if I'm asked for average acceleration? Well, if I'm given the velocity function, it's not going to be uh, an integral because I'm asked for average acceleration. Acceleration is the change in velocity. So the average acceleration is v of b minus v of a. Or what if I'm given the acceleration function and asked for average acceleration? Then it's 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of your acceleration function. Okay, see, because average acceleration, the output of the acceleration function is acceleration, so I'm doing average of that function. Okay, so that's the difference between those two. And you notice how, yeah, you do the integral idea if the output of your function matches the average you're trying to find. Now, there are a couple other important ideas that I want to talk about relating to this idea that just helps you sort through all these things. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about here is the argument between total displacement and total distance of an object. And I want to talk about this because the math involved is pretty similar to when you're doing average velocity and average acceleration, average rate of change, so let's not get them confused. So displacement versus distance. The difference between those is displacement is from how much uh, total change there is from where you started. So let's say I walk forward 10 meters and back 8 meters. My total displacement is just 2 meters because from where I started to where I am now, there's just a 2 meter difference. Total distance in that scenario would be 18. How much total ground have I covered? Well, I went forward 10 and then back 8, so a total of 18. Um, now, we've talked about how the integral of the velocity function is your total distance covered. So my integral from a to v of v of t dt that's my total distance or displacement. Well, it's your total displacement covered. Okay, whereas total distance is going to be the absolute value of that. And let's break that down and think about it. Okay, so this doesn't matter if the velocity function is always positive. That is, if I'm always going forward, well, then both these are similar. So you can just say the total distance is the the integral of the velocity function. However, what if your velocity is negative at times? That is, what if we have a velocity function that looks like something like this? Okay, so I'm positive for a bit and then I'm negative. Well, in the positive section, the integral is going to be this and the negative is this. So when you take the integral of this, well, it's going to be plus the top part minus the bottom part and it's going to be Oh, maybe a, a small number where you subtract the two. And that's going to be the total displacement. But if I want the total distance covered, you're taking the absolute value because in effect what you're going to do is take this negative and make it positive. So now I have this area above the x-axis. So it'll be plus the first thing plus the second thing, which will give the total distance covered. Okay, so if you find the total displacement, you can always just take the integral, but if the total distance, you want to be safe, you take the absolute value of it, the integral of the absolute value. Um, and that's the subtle difference between those. And I wanted to talk about that here real briefly because, well, first of all, it's good to think about. It's easy to get those mixed up. But 
Notice the similarity. By just adding the 1 over b minus a, I change what I'm doing. I'm all of a sudden finding the average velocity. Without that, I'm finding the total displacement or the total distance covered. So it's a subtle little thing. It's just by going 1 over b minus a, you kind of change what you're interpreting there. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about in this video. I wanted to get this idea of the difference between average value and average rate of change. And you kind of see that a big thing between the difference of those is that when you're using rate of change, when you find the average rate of change or something, you're using a function to find something about its derivative. So I'm using the position function to find out information about the velocity function. So I use the position function, rate of change of that is the velocity. When you find the average value, you're using the function itself to find out stuff about it. To find the average velocity, I can take the integral of the velocity function times 1 over b minus a to find the average velocity.